When America grapples with a problem, it tends to look for root causes. The newest target on the White House agenda is drug abuse, and America's movie makers and music makers have already become the target of presidential finger-pointing. When I asked by Newsweek magazine why drugs are such a problem now, President Reagan cited recent movies with what he called gratuitous drug scenes that make it look kind of attractive and funny. He also blamed the music world, which in his words has made it sound as if it's the thing to do. Let's get the flip side of this story from our guest in Los Angeles. Frank Zappa, so well known as a musician, has recently testified against content labeling on records and tapes. Sheila Benson is the film critic for the Los Angeles Times. Mr. Zappa, uh, let me start with you and ask you the basic simple question, which is uh, how do you feel about what the president said? Well, I think that he's uh, barking up the wrong tree. And if you are concerned about the way people behave under the influence of drugs, and you don't want to have the negative uh, aspects of drug use manifest themselves in industry and you know, all the other places he's complaining about, then deal with the real root cause of it, why people use drugs. It's not the chemicals themselves, because you could take all these chemicals off the market and the people would find something else to hurt themselves with. People take drugs because of hopelessness, or they want to relax, or they want to experiment on themselves. And it's a mental health problem, not a law enforcement problem. And, but it sounds better if you go uh, you know, before the American people and say, we're going to have a war on drugs, rather than say, we're going to have a war on bad mental health. Well, even if it's a mental health problem, though, if, if you're right about that, uh may not movies, uh, song lyrics, things like that have an effect. Uh, young people in particular uh, get a lot of their philosophy from music, have for the last 20 or 30 years. Well, they also get philosophy from their parents at home, and they get philosophy from people on television telling them the news. They get philosophy from people in high places, like the President of the United States. When you see a person like the President of the United States acting like that, I mean, that's really, he's saying something that is genuinely stupid. That creates hopelessness. You look at this man who is supposed to be our president. Everybody says he's a nice guy and we're supposed to like him. He's saying things that are really tragically stupid. That creates hopelessness. In his own way, he's pushing drug use. Uh, Ms. Benson, let me uh, uh, turn this around and ask you for a minute. Uh, oh, you're a movie critic. You've seen all these uh, films uh, that the president talks about. Uh, what do you make of what he said? Well, I want to know what films he's talking about that encourage drug use. There are films, certainly, that are about drugs or that have drugs in them. I notice they've used The Big Chill as an example. But in The Big Chill, the one truly ineffective person, the one man who was out of it in this entire group, uh, was the Bill Hurt character who, who was the drug pusher. He was... Uh, if, if we're going to have examples, he was the impotent one of them, which I think is hardly an example that anybody is going to want to promulgate for the young people. Well, do you, do you worry that uh, the government is going to, it's a little like record labeling, I suppose, with, with movies, is going to start trying to dictate content in some way? Absolutely. I mean, uh, screenwriters theoretically reflect a culture. Uh, they don't necessarily go out and find, they're not trying to make signposts for it at all. Uh, I hardly think you can say that Scarface made any kind of cocaine use attractive in any possible way. Well, uh, Easy Rider to take one, I suppose. Okay, if you take Easy Rider, which was 1969, I think we have to put it in context of what the world was like at that time. You have Dennis Hopper in 1969, and in 1986 you have Dennis Hopper in a film that's just about to come out called Blue Velvet, in which he is somebody mixed up with the drug trade who is probably the most lethal, the most dangerous character that I think I've ever seen on a screen. Well, I take it that uh, both of you are a little worried about the government putting its hands on content and, and would like the government to keep its hands off. Uh, Mr. Zappa, is that, is that fair? I think that the government, uh, as constituted now in, in the White House, and he, remember even Tip O'Neill makes the distinction between the president and the White House, because you have a, a teleprompter president surrounded by these strange people who manufacture speeches and, you know, artificial news for him. This is a dangerous time for America because you have nasty, evil people connected with the presidency. Ronald Reagan and his friends are bad people, and what they are suggesting and the tools they are using are bad things to do to America. He may be popular, but this is, 
Four more years, please. Ms. Benson, very quickly, uh, how can the entertainment industry help with drugs? Well, I think they, uh, I think that motion pictures can only help by reflecting what they see. Uh, I don't think in any of the leading films we have right now, we have anything that makes drugs attractive to kids at all. Uh, one of the biggest films this summer is Top Gun. You don't have uh, young military men reflecting any kind of drug use. Okay. Ms. Benson, Mr. Zappa, thank you very much. We're at 16 minutes before the hour.